one of his favourite locations ever. I just love this house. It's making me feel inspired. But a visit to a mill in the broads knocks the wind out of him. No. No, nothing. Nothing. Then blows him away. Blimey. Wow. And at an antique shop in Edinburgh, Drew's blocked by the high prices. How much is that? 400 quid. How much? 400 quid. And has to get over a few obstacles before he can do a deal. Okay. I can't get out now. I'm a bit scared. <laughs> I can't get out of here. Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Oh, wow. He searched for weird and wonderful objects. That's fabulous. There's only one in the world. How do you value that? In his hunt for treasure. And what do you want for it? Twelve. He bargains hard. Eight and a half. And there's nothing he won't buy. Look at his little chaps. Look. <laughs> With help from his wife, Rebecca. Lovely. OK, so that's a sale. And a team of renovators. He transforms thousands of items from junk to gems. <laughs> At his base in North Wales, Drew Pritchard is setting the team jobs for the week ahead. Get it out there, give me a shout, I want to see, we're going to make a little frame for the back of it. Items are restored. Get it out there, I didn't get that for nothing, so I need, I need it turning around pronto. It's then time for Drew and T to hit the road, to search for more stock. They're off on a long journey of 260 miles across the UK, from Conwy to Norfolk. Drew's destination today is somewhere he's wanted to visit for years. We are in Norfolk, but we're off to a house called Vowood. We're about to see a remarkable arts and crafts house. The, the house itself is arts and crafts? Yes. Wow. Um, it's the real deal. Are you about to have a jolly good day, though? I think so. It, it, it's one of those places that sort of you think, what on earth? Where? Like, like it's been dropped from another planet. Really? Yeah. Drew, at favourite, favourite, period. Bowood House is a Grade 2 listed building, built between 1903 and 1905, with Grade 1 listed gardens. Rare book dealer Simon Finch bought the house in 1998 and has restored it back to its former glory. It's an arts and crafts house. The arts and crafts movement was a return to more traditional methods of construction in a, in a reaction to the Industrial Revolution, begun by John Ruskin and William Morris in the 1850s. The history is very quite convoluted of the house. The architect was Edward Schroeder Pryor, built for the Lloyd family, moved in, and it got rented out as a boys' school, then requisitioned in the First War, and then sold to the health authorities, when I bought it, it was an old people's home. I kind of just really fell in love with it, and how can you not? I mean, just look at it. It's, um, it's, it's extraordinary. I don't choose what to buy. I mean, I just see it, and I just think I quite like that. It's quite, quite impulsive. I mean, I just love buying objects. I was, I mean, I'm, a, I'm a rare book dealer, but you know, inevitably you'd come across stuff. I like buying bits of art off people I know, or just going somewhere and finding somewhere. It's a very, such an enjoyable thing to do. Hey, how are you doing? You right? Good. Welcome. Thank you so much. I've read about this place, so it's really good to see it. It's amazing. Can we well, have to go in? Come in, come in, come in. You. Come oh, thank you. Thank you. I really hadn't intended to buy a big house in Norfolk. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> well, I, yeah. I, I, I have. Yeah. <laughs> So how long did it take to do this? Because it's a remarkable... The house looks stunning, beautiful. Um, it, took, it took about, you know, eight years. I mean, I had an end, end, endless... I, mean, I could have done it quicker. But... Yeah, yeah. This house is astonishing. At every single turn, inside, outside, underneath, it's incredible. And uh, it literally knocks your socks off. Oh, now you're talking. Look at this room. Yeah. Wonderful. Love the sort of art you're putting in here as well. <laughs> it's it's great. Did you, did you, you've done this. You've got that big frame. I got that big frame, and with my neighbour who's cast, casting mould. Cast, yeah. Casting mould. 
we're now entering the central part of the building and it's got this wonderful open double height hallway and it's just lovely you know it's great again it's sort of like a baronial medieval dining room which is exactly where the arts and crafts movement came from it's got wonderful handmade delft tiles around the chimney piece there as well beautiful oak floor great big beams it's got the lot it's pure arts and crafts oh love that chair chair is fantastic gorgeous yeah scottish bobbin turned chair yeah what day do you think that is true 1880s I... yeah i think i think you're i think you think you're right god that's a belter Mm. Love that. That's right up my street. Just gorgeous. Massive oversized bronze casters on it. Got a nice backrest. It's got really simple planks. Bobbin furniture is so called because of the series of bobbin or sewing spool shapes used to ornament the legs of chairs or tables. This chair could be worth around a thousand pounds. This chair is something I really want, so I'm going to go out on a limb. I reckon I can get a 1200 quid for it at a push. And a push. Um, so I'm going to offer eight. He'll come back to me a thousand. And I'll come out to him a good profit. That's what I'd like to happen. So, so what about a deal on this then? Can I, can I buy this lovely chair? I love this chair. Love I, I know. I want to keep this one. If you ever sell it, I'd really like to buy it. I it's one of those ones that just got me. And I'll just pay, you know, yeah. more than anybody. More, more okay. Probably worth. I, I promise you that I will. And that may, Thank uh, you. I really, it's been a yeah. Thank you so much. To do. I've, got to leave. I've got to walk away now. To, uh, <laughs> this, uh, this, room, this room was two rooms when I bought it, and it was originally designated as a billiard room. I, I, I was naive about properties. I didn't realise how much work actually was involved. <laughs> I, just, Huge I, just, I, just, I just sort of take down a few walls, put some paint up, you know, fill it full of stuff, and... It'll look great. It, but it was, it was a process, and it was... Mm. It was and I had friends came and did sort of artistic bits to it and and I like just buying stuff I mean you know I just like <laughs> we look someone else like that. I just love <laughs> buying rubbish you know <laughs> that, that's the sort of thing that I buy yeah that's, well, very I mean, much. that's, do... that's, that's sort of that's yeah, right yeah. up my street actually well I mean you can probably buy that if you're generous with me yeah I will be you will be no yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, <laughs> of course, no, let's be hard about it. No, 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 no. This yeah. nice little Rexine work chair. Yeah. It's not bent, it's not been welded, it's not been stripped. It's mint, it's the best one I've ever seen. This chair was made by Lee Bank. They were manufacturers of office furniture from the 1930s to the 1970s. Chairs like this could have a value of around £450. What's it going to cost me today? What would you like for it? Well, what are you going to, what are you going to offer me for it, then? Come on, I'm just... 200 quid. 300, it's yours. I can't, I'm not doing it for less. Salvage seeker Drew Pritchard is at Volwood House in Norfolk. It was built in the arts and crafts style at the beginning of the 20th century. The house looks stunning. And I've oh, only okay. seen one tiny bit. My street, actually. But will he be able to strike a deal? 200 quid. 300, it's yours. I can't, I'm not doing it for less. I've just sold one very similar. I remember those ones I found over in Battle. They're more or less the same, weren't they? We sold them for, what, 295 each. Oh, no. Oh, well, yeah. oh. <laughs> 250. 250, sold. There you go. <laughs> Simon's been a dealer for a very long time. His negotiating skills are very strong. He's sort of, no. Three pound and not a penny less. It's really, it's that. Bang. Yes or no. I can use that to my advantage as well. Oh, look at this. So what's this then? Annabelle Gray did this and it was the first mosaic she'd done. Beautiful. I'm just continuing through, isn't it? That's, that's how I felt, felt about it. Simon's taste inside is completely individual, but also very good. Love it. I just love this house. It's nice. making me feel inspired. Good. He does most of his rooms sort of colour specific, but also he's been very brave by getting artists in and giving them completely free reign to do whatever they want. Now that again harks back to the arts and crafts movement. So he's just continuing the thread. It's great. Really impressed. A friend, another, another person did, did all these moths and butterflies. There's loads of work gone into that. Yeah. This is starting to be our favourite house. Good. I think it is, isn't it? Yeah. It's getting there. OK. More, please. The ground for me are stable yards, 
attics and cellars. If the stuff upstairs is anything to go by, there's got to be some great things down here. So what have we got here? Ah, is this what you want to show yeah, us? Yeah, just, 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 I mean, there's sort of projects in there, but I think there are about nine of them. What were you oh, going to do with them? Use them as picture lights or something? Yeah. I've got a hell of a lot of these. <laughs> like a lot, you know. But yeah. uh, I, I stripped the hospital full of them out. That's what, and every right. bed had one. They're going to be livid when they find out. <laughs> First thing we see is a load of machinists' lights, and these are all lying on the floor, and there's about nine or ten of them. What they make are great wall lights, but also great desk lights, and they fetch pretty good money as well. Once restored, these angle-poised factory lights could be worth around 200... Buy them all if the price was right, you know, but I'm not mad keen to them. I'm sort of... Uh, 350 the lot. How much is that each? That sounds about right. Sold. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start asking the prices to Simon, and he comes up with £350 for the nine. Bite's hand off. Done. I'll have those. They're going to cost a little bit to do, probably about £45 to £50 each to restore them. So, you know, we're going to be less than £100 they'll be on the floor. That's good business. So had this been the kitchen garden this, this was the kitchen garden, yeah. Whilst in the gardens, Simon shows Drew his latest project. So this is your haven? This is, this is where I'm, I'm trying to... You can make me an offer. I mean, I bought this again with a collection how, of books. How long, how, long, how long have you had this? I reckon I've had this 15 years. OK. Like it? It's up your street. It is. It is. Charles and Ray Eames for Herman Miller, 1956. In this country, they were made under licence as well. Yeah, so there's yeah. slight differences. Yeah. It's all about the guys who buy these chairs. It's about the condition. Yeah. And this one's rough. Rough? Yeah, look. It's got coach bolts in it. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. It was designed Michigan. Made by Healing of London. Yeah, there you go. The one to have is the really early 1956 and made 57, 58 in the UK by Hill. And that's what we're looking at. It's a design classic. It's right up there. It's top three. So to find an unrestored, really early, marked Eames with footstool, happy days. This lounge chair was designed by husband and wife team, Charles and Ray Eames. They're quoted as saying they wanted it to have the warm and receptive look of a well-used first baseman's mitt. The chair became an icon of American design and features in the Museum of Modern Art in New York. This chair could be worth around £3,000. Right, what would you like for it? Well, well you, you're the dealer. You're a dealer too. I know, but I'm a you're dealer, a dealer at too. Books. You, yeah, I'm yeah, a dealer you're, at books. You're, have you seen your house? You're clearly a way better dealer than I'm ever going to be. Oh. Sold. Thank you. That was a bit quick. Yeah, I know. You didn't <laughs> like that, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm very pleased with that price. There's some work to do. There is. There's some minor repairs and nuts and bolts to change over and cleaning and this, that and the other, but nothing major. Just needs doing carefully. We're never going to get you out of that, are we? Oh, I'm, I'm beginning to regret it already. <laughs> <laughs> what can I replace it with? I've got one, sir. What? <laughs> <laughs> Give me 12 minutes. <laughs> I've had a really lovely time. I mean, it's been great meeting Drew and T. It's for to have that kind of reaction and affirmation and warmth. It's been fabulous. It's been great fun. Today was exceptional. We've come to a mouth-watering house and bought some wonderful things. It's been a really interesting educational day. And clearly, Simon has fallen head over heels for this place. And it's sort of a match made in heaven. I think the two of them are inseparable. I'm really glad he found it. You know. Everybody has a stroke of luck every now and again and mine was today. I managed to buy an exceptional piece of modern design for a great price. I would have paid more. But hey, once again, dealer to dealer. That's the way it goes. All done, T. Yep. All in. Finished. Simon, a pleasure. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you very much.
astonishing. Have we been to a better house? It's right up there, isn't it? It's top five, isn't it's it? It's top, I, th I think it's top three. Lots of boxes ticked for the right, right things. Absolutely astonishing house, just in the middle of nowhere. Whilst in Norfolk, Drew's keen to make the most of being in the area. So the next day, the boys drive 26 miles south to the Norfolk Broads. We're going to Sutton Windmill, um, which is a closed down museum. It's actually genuinely a windmill as well. Yeah, right. should be able to see it. See the massive windmill shaped thing. Yeah. Ian Smith and Ian Dickinson are linked to the business that ran the site. The windmill itself was built in 1789. Um, it was held by a baker by the name of Warts. Um, he held it on for many centuries and then passed it on to a company called Bygraves. The windmill itself was struck by lightning twice, both resulting in fires, the last one being in 1940 when the actual windmill stopped trading. Once the windmill stopped working, the mill and the surrounding buildings were turned into a local history museum in the 1970s. However, in 2008, the museum closed. In 2010, the actual contents went up for sale uh, as an auction. So unfortunately, yeah, all you see what he finds, obviously stuff that we actually say is not anything, it's quite interesting to see his views. This has been closed down for a long time. Sack the gardener. Hello. Oh, sorry, how are you doing? How are you doing? All right. Ian? How's, how's, yeah, sorry, how are you doing? All right. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's easy to spot the place. Yes. You found it all right. Yeah, there. look for the windmill. There you go. Oh, there you yeah. go. All right. So where should we start? In here? Yes. Go through. Go through. Yeah. Go through. After you guys. Ah, oh, okay, I see. So this was the main museum, was it? This was the start of the main museum. And in this one, this housed uh, an old fashioned shop, a butcher's. Uh, we had a cobblers, we had a... Uh, Bakers? <laughs> we, uh, this, one, this one's practical again. There's a few bits and bobs that's been left behind, but obviously I don't... Yeah, know. It looks like just kitchen bits and bobs. Yeah. All right, well, look, can we have a look in the other sheds? Mm -hmm. That would be appreciated. I think we'll leave it in here, then. Yeah, looks empty. Looks okay. done. Yeah. Looking around, it's not looking good. They've had an auction prior to me getting here, and everything's gone. There's lots of bits here. There's boxes of this, that and the other, but it's just junky bits that nobody wants. There's nothing left. So it is looking uh, looking at the moment like a wasted trip, but uh, there's a couple more locations for us to have a look at. It's impressive, isn't it? It really is. Great oh. building, great building. Mind your head. <laughs> Problem with doors today. Now in the windmill, which is and was apparently the biggest one in the UK. It's an absolute monster. And then it's got this huge warehouse attached to the side of it as well. It, it's massive. It's like no other, no other windmill I've ever seen. Have a look in there, Drew. Have a little rumble round. Oh, OK. It's all the stuff nobody wanted. bits and bobs that was left from the auction sales. OK. We'll, uh, just... It's rammed full of knackered old furniture. There's, there's nothing here that I can see. I suppose I'll have to go and have a look down the other end as well. But I can't see what he wanted. Right. OK. No. No, nothing. Nothing. Well, so far we've been through a lot of space, lots of things, and there's nothing to buy. Having looked around building after building of sparse rooms, Drew's starting to lose hope. Got one more building to go into, and if there's nothing there, it's been a wasted trip, so we'll see. Limey. Wow. Salvage hunter Drew Pritchard is at Sutton Windmill in the Norfolk Broads. Yeah. 
He's pinning all his hopes on the last room. Blimey. Wow. An entire chemist shop. Correct. Wow. Mm. I've just walked into the final building and I can't believe my luck. It's a complete Victorian mahogany chemist shop of really good quality. It's the best I've ever seen. It's absolutely outstanding and massive in scale. It's uh, quite a find. Where did it come from, do you know? Isle of Wight. Isle of Wight. It's by Gould Chemist. This is one piece. Yeah, yep. It's like splits there. Yeah, it's a joint there as well. It is indeed. The whole thing. Yep. In one. In one. The chemist shop was made in the late 1880s by shop fitters George Treble and Son in London. When the chemist closed in 1990, the complete shop was bought by the museum. Sold as a complete set, it could be worth around £20,000. You don't want to split it up? No. OK. And what do you want for it? Twelve. It's great. I'm not going to knock it. It's a fantastic find. It really is. It really, really is. It's a wonderful piece. But it's, it, it comes with a few issues, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. So I need to get it for a price that I'm very comfortable, because it's going to take me a year to sell it, maybe more. It's done, no, I understand. A bigger van. The lads have got a lot of work. Just getting it out with no damage, complete. And Larry's got to come down here and photograph it, measure everything up before it comes out of there. Um, so it's an expensive operation. The boy's going to be down here two and a half to three days easily. Uh, but I'm not complaining. A fantastic find. I'm over the moon to be able to buy it. Oh my god. Look at that. It's double cyanide. Cyanide. Oh dear. That's the problem. Double cyanide, zip cyanide. That's even, in, yeah. yeah. That'll properly kill you twice. <laughs> <laughs> what I'd love to happen was it to go to a collector in this country. That's what I'd love. I really would. And uh, if I could, I'd discount it a lot more to get it there. T loads a couple of cabinets that aren't fixed to the walls. The bee we through is quite an experience. Just seeing go around the buildings and thinking, why am I here? Is there anything valuable? Can't see anything. And all of a sudden, then to see his face when he walked into the chemist, I think that was the ultimate sort of you know, surprise, surprise we've got, yeah. Um, but I believe he's got a good price and uh, we've got a good price for it. So we've both met and uh, gentlemen's agreement, we're done. Today started off very quiet and then ended with a bang. We found something absent of any shop interior. It's just got it all. I am over the moon. Drew, thanks very much, mate. Cheers, Glad I took you higher. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Right, Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All, all the best. Guys. Thank Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All the best, guys. Now, take care. Bye bye. So, didn't have to do much loading today, did you? I'll have well, to leave that to the boys. <laughs> Not as much as will be done there. <laughs> Superb. What a find. It's like Christmas. It was like Christmas. After a few days away in Norfolk, the boys are happy to be home. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, hello. hello. Good time? Everybody all right? Yes. <laughs> For about an hour, and there was nothing at all. So it already had a sale, so I thought oh, I'd have wasted my time. Then we walked into one room, and there was a pair of these. And we paid 9,000 for it. Pardon? Yep. But with these thrown in for free was an entire uh, chemist shop. Oh, my. Good grief, it's a whole room. Amazing, isn't it? So you did pay 9,000. So 9,000. Yeah. It's worth 25 to 35,000 all day long. All day long. It is unusual to come across complete chemist shops, they tend to go into retail, but uh, film sets actually are quite 
a good business for us. We do we do a lot on the film set route. Next up are the items Drew bought at Bowood House. Oh yes. Original Eans. Based the real deal. It is, isn't it? All marked. And it was the absolute bargain price of twelve hundred pounds. In perfect condition, they're fetching four, four and a half thousand pounds in perfect condition. Well, he's come back with an Eames chair. It's in pretty good nick. And to have the footstool is just a huge bonus. <laughs> <laughs> 350 quid, nine of them. What do you find a sort of light graveyard? 350 for nine lamps. Perfect. It's our bread and butter. And then we got this, 250. You paid a lot for it. I've uh, never seen it with that on. And it's mint. It's a rock, but there's hardly any profit in it. Ten minutes. Carl doing it, is he? <laughs> <laughs> nice, isn't it? Cheers. While Gavin gives the chair a quick clean, Carl gets to work converting the wall lights into desk lamps. Firstly, he cleans and removes paint splatters. The downside to modifying old lights is sometimes you have to drill extra holes in them. The light fitting itself is earthed, but I need to make sure that the steel mounting plate is going on and the shafts is earthed as well, so it has to be safe. He drills a hole and adds a brass bolt, ready to be connected to the earth wire, wires the lamp. Drew wants to keep the industrial look, so Carl is using some old H-beams as a base. Basically what we're going to do is just, they're all very, very rough, they're dangerous. So we're going to use the um, polishing discs on the angle grinder, clean them all up and just make them safer. I love this bit, sparks flying everywhere. Finally, he marks up and then drills the holes ready to attach the lamp to its new base. That's quite good. Yeah, I like his idea. After spending over £10,000 in Norfolk, Drew's hoping to pick up some bargains in the Scottish capital. Right, see? Now, Edinburgh has always been associated with the antiques trade. It's been a very, very good place to find antiques for years. So, for me, is a regular call, and usually walk away with something. The city of Edinburgh is well known for its architecture, not least its famous castle. The so-called New Town is over 250 years old. However, the name is relative to the age of the medieval streets of the area around the castle and the Royal Mile. You know, if you're not been to Edinburgh for a while, you forget how pretty it is. It is one of the finest Georgian cities in Britain, I would say. It's owned and managed by ex-adman Simon Scott. Having collected antiques for over 50 years, his new venture has turned a hobby into a business. I have been married 30 years to a minimalist. And I am a uh, maximalist. She says, I'm not having all this... I would call it glorious gear uh, in my house. You better do something about it. So I set up a shop. It really caters for, I don't know who it caters for. The young, the old. Uh, we've got some very, very rare, expensive things. We've got some very cheap things. I suspect it's going to be a room for a little flexibility. There he is. Hello. Simon Scott. Drew, how are you doing? Nice to meet you. Hi there. Hi there. Right. Thanks for, for having us. Pleasure. There you go. Good Come hat. Let's see if you've... <laughs> it is a good, <laughs> a good hat, hat, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. yeah there we Very go. Similar. Oh, God. <laughs> yes, there we go. I think I have that effect. Come on, on in. OK, so, cool. Your shop. How long have you been here? I've been here a year. Oh, just a year? Really? Yeah. Oh. Well, it's very impressive. Well, that's yeah, kind of you to say so. Yeah, yeah. I like your lamps. Did we sell those to you? You didn't, actually. No. <laughs> I buy them off you. First impressions are good. Uh, it's well laid out, and there is a really, really, really varied mix of stock, and we're talking really varied. 
but that's what I like, and this seems to work. London, many, many years ago. It's a sort of display jar for a... Apothecary. Apothecary, and it says magnesia on the front. Uh, how much is that one? No price on it. 700 quid. Uh, okay. The stuff in Scotland tends to be not as expensive as down south, so expectations are high. What sort of money are you charging for this sort, these, these pots? Well, it depends what, how many you buy. Well, all of them. 800 quid. Okay. All right. I'll keep going. As I'm going round, remember, this is dealer now, trade to trade, gloves are off, so if the price is right, you'll buy it. If you, if you don't say anything, just walk away. How much is that? 400 quid. How much? Collected. Can we go through here? Of course. Yeah. Drew heads to a back room. Um, odd question, that uh, workbench there. It's the workbench. Doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be, but it is at the moment. I go through to the sort of back part, the warehouse, and they've got a little workshop, and in the corner of the workshop is a painted work table. This could have come out of a factory. Judging by the handles on it, it did, but it also could have come out of an industrial kitchen from a school or something like that. It's a very, very good retail low table. You know, if you walk into some of these shops that have loads of jumpers and jeans and that type of thing, this is the sort of thing that they're looking for. So if it's cheap enough, I can buy it. Around £600. What are you offering me on it? I don't know. It's yours. You've got to give me a price. Dealer now. £5,000. OK. Decorative salvage expert Drew Pritchard is in Edinburgh at Antiques Emporium Wow. Having been priced out of the showroom... How much? 400 quid. He's hoping to do a deal on a workbench out the back. What are you offering me on it? I don't know. It's yours. You've got to give me a price. Dealer now. £5,000. OK. <laughs> <laughs> that means you just don't want to sell it. <laughs> well... £300. £300 for the bench, I'm going to buy that. Simon at first doesn't really want to sell the table, but um, he's a dealer now, so he instantly said, well, there's a profit in it, and sold it. And that is definitely the right mentality. I would sell more or less every single thing I owned if somebody asked me. That's the mentality you've got to have. Look at that. What a great piece of timber. It is, isn't it? It's a character. Yeah. This has been a burr. Mm. Yeah. And the whole seat is, is a single burr. The seat has been made out of a large burr. And a burr is a thing on the side of a tree. And when you look at a tree, it looks like it's got a spot or a big wart. That's a burr. And when you look inside those and cut them, you get those wonderful collections of smaller sort of oyster-shaped rings. And it's very, very... Maple and yew wood. Once restored, it could have a value of £350. So for resto, that's what's in here, yeah. yeah? He's restoring. How much is it as it is? 120. So we're saying that we're talking 100 quid. Done. Fab. Worth it for the seat alone, isn't it? It is. All that chair needs is to be glued back together again properly and well and tidily. That's it. It's been like that for a very long time in that finish, and I'm not going to be the person to ruin it. That is going to stay exactly as it is. Having started to build up a collection, Drew's keen to leave no stone unturned. It's actually quite good up here. I can see everything else. How on earth do I get out of here? OK. Yeah, I wouldn't mind a, a look at those chairs in there. Can you pull that out, T? Yeah. His and hers. That's sort of why, why they are that size, to be honest with you. They're very, very... I mean, look. I know, they're difficult. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm not the biggest person in the world, but also I'm, I'm not a midget, and look at that. Look at the colour on them. It's disgusting, isn't it? No, I'm not talking about this. <laughs> I'm not talking about this. I'm talking I was. about the quality of the wood. They look... Awful. Looks like somebody's been sick on it. It's just foul. And God knows who picked a colour like that. 
But what I like about them is they're odd. They're of huge proportion. Watch are a good car, a quality item, well made. That's those. This pair of his and hers open armchairs date from the 1860s. Once restored and recovered, they could be worth around £900. What's the real price on them? Because they're tucked at the back of your warehouse. I've got a feeling you bought them, couldn't flog them, and have got sick of them and thrown them in the back here. Am I right? It's almost like being a psychotherapist. <laughs> <laughs> it is. That's you what's know, I have made a lot of mistakes in my life. Hey, we all do. Hey, I, 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 I'm buying okay, them. My next know, thing I'm, could be another I'm, mistake. I'm here to have some mistakes pointed out, not to leave emotionally quadriplegic. <laughs> How much are they really? To you? Yeah. To you, 700 quid. Fine, sold. Done. There you go. Thank you. That wasn't too bad. That wasn't too good either. <laughs> Have you made a profit? A modest one. No. That's it. That's it. You're done. That's, That's it. That's what we That's do. That's the secret of life. That's it. I think if I can strip all that fabric off them, get down to the bare bones, so you can really see what's there, and I can sell them like that, or what I'm probably going to do, which is ring up a mate in the trade, say I've got a good pair of chairs, can you give me 650 for it? That's the reality. That's what's really going to happen with them. This is when you find original William Morris. No, that isn't the that isn't original fabric. If you look in there, yeah, see that? Yeah, it's a staple. Yeah. So that's not. So you've got to yeah. go lower than that again now. It's crazy, isn't it? You buy something for 550 quid, then cut it up with a knife. I found him very straightforward. I found him very uh, clear about what he liked and what he didn't like. I found him extremely tight on the prices he offered, but that's business, that's what you do. I learned a lot from him, and uh, it was a real privilege to have him in the shop, and I hope he comes again. Simon is a new dealer, he's only a year into it, but he's not daft. He buys what he likes, and that's really good. He's very brave, and that's the mark of a good dealer, actually. See? Yeah, done. Yeah, all in. Thank you very much. A very enjoyable day. It has been a very been enjoyable a good laugh, day. I've very learned good. a lot. Thank you very much. Thank very you. nice Thank to you. meet you. So Simon's a very pleasant chap. He looks very nice. Good choice in headwear. <laughs> Same hairstyle as well. I was going to give you that nice chair, you're not having it now. You can shove it. The only way, the, the only way you'd give me that chair is in a bar fight up the edge. <laughs> After a long drive home, the team are put straight to work. The table is given a tidy up and then photographed for the website, modelled by Drew's glamorous assistant, while Gavin strengthens the joints of the combat chair using PVA glue. This is a five minute glue, but it's better to leave it overnight, really. It will stick in five minutes, but leave it overnight and you're guaranteed then. It's then sold straight away to an interior designer in California. From Bowood House, the industrial chair has sold to a dealer in Hong Kong. And in Norfolk, Carl, Gavin and Hilary have been dispatched to collect the chemist shop from Sutton Windmill. Before any dismantling can begin, Alary photographs the room so the future buyer can see it in its original layout. Drew's asked me to photograph it in situ. It was probably easier in some ways for me to drive all the way out to Norfolk <laughs> and um, photograph it here than it would be to try and reassemble it all back at base camp. Photo shoot over, the boys set about painstakingly taking apart the cabinet. And their hard work hasn't gone to waste. Good news, we have. She's bought one off me before and uh, she wants another complete chemist shop interior. So I'd rather see this sold in one piece.